Hello everyone, Jim Cobb again. I just need to introduce our next program which is about how to use free flow which is a fluid acrylic. But before we go in, just want to say something about the the pouring medium program, which was for the last month. Um, each of these programs will run for two months, so that if you really would like to have a pouring medium thing happen, and you haven't been able to persuade anyone to put one on, then you've got until the end of May to persuade somebody to do a pouring medium for you, either your art group or your art supply shop, whoever sort of works with you on stuff like that. Now, I don't know how this whole system is going to work. I like the idea of people coming into a group and working with each other and, and kind of learning from each other in that process as well as having a bit of a social thing. And I see it as a way for um, uh, retail shop owners to interact with their customers uh, but I don't know whether they see it that way they might be too busy to do all of this so um, I have to have an alternate method that we can revert to if this doesn't <coughs> become a popular way of presenting um, comparisons of different products so uh, if it doesn't work out, we'll work out a way that you can do it at home. In fact, you can do this uh, workshop at home and you can observe what I'm going to try to show you to get some concept of what the different products are. Now, I think I need to start off with Golden because Golden have had their fluid acrylics on the market in America for... Oh, it must be 12 or 14 years, that's quite a long time. And so if you're a mixed media person, you will find a lot of ideas on American websites about how to use golden fluid acrylics. And if you like the idea, you can, since we're living in Australia, if you like the free flow, Atelier free flow paint, it's easier to get and it's not as expensive as the golden paint. So you can just do some substitution if you can work that out. The Golden product is a very nice one. Um, and since that product has been around, there is now another new Golden product called... What do they call it? They don't call it Free Flow. They called it High Flow Acrylics. And they are liquid. Now, just to show you what the differences are, we need to do this as a close-up because it's very hard to see the degree of gloss or absence of gloss on, on, on the screen. So I'm tilting it around and hoping that at one of those angles you'll see a slight reflection, which means that if you're using the golden paint in mixed media, you'll have little puddles of acrylic in amongst the other things. There is... Uh, free flow which is totally matte and has the same surface appearance as the watercolour paper you're working on. Now I don't think you would be able to do an acrylic gouache with the golden paint or any of the other paint that's paints that are on the market so that's another thing to think about. I'd better actually carry that out so that I'm not just uh, talking about it, I'm actually doing it. So, there the paint is, it, it tends to run a little bit and it's vertical and thick, but very easy to get it to do very, very fluid things by having a wet paintbrush. So, I can't really see the need to have a very fluid version. I don't think it's as useful as the, as the consistency of free flow as it comes because it makes a very good acrylic substitute for gouache. 
or for watercolour. And so we have a, a workshop that's going to break up into two different divisions, as it were. And if you all come together and some of you are doing mixed media and some of you are doing um, little gouache sketches on watercolour paper, um, I hope you will compare what you're doing. And what I'm interested in is the watercolour or, or gouache sketching, which I do a lot of myself. So I, I, I know how to do that. I, I'm not good at mixed media, so you should be looking at uh, Trisha Wurst's uh, video on how to do that. I hope you'll look at the videos before you come to the workshop and that you'll compare notes. But what I think we need to do first is look at the different products. Now, um, and the packaging, because there, there are two Australian brands that have come on the market and they're, but this is called Matisse Fluid, but it's actually very liquid. So, and it has the pointy cap. And when sometimes I've had difficulty, but so uh, I don't know what the secret is to get these pointy caps to work successfully all the time. I thought they were wonderful, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't want to work. So, I thought we need to rush out and buy pointy caps, but there's the golden fluid liquid paint, it just does that. You can pour it straight out, you can pour it straight out of the container. The same thing with the Matisse if it decides to come out. Um, now I don't know how to unblock these things. I do know how to unblock this kind of cap, which is the original golden cap. Uh, you can put a matchstick in it. Or with our caps, which are equally irritating, they get blocked up. Put a matchstick in there and keep it there. If you're an untidy person like me, if you're a very, very tidy person and you make sure the cap actually clicks shut, it should work. So let's see whether it's going to oblige me. Yes, it's working. Isn't that wonderful? But it doesn't work for me usually because I don't push the thing down hard enough. So, um, you know, I would appreciate some feedback from our audience as to what we should actually do. What I would like to do for the smaller packaging, in our case a 60ml bottle that has that little flip top cap, is I'd like to put the paint in a tube. Because to me tubes are a lot handier and uh, easy to carry around if you're going out sketching and so forth and you've got an ordinary cap that you take on and off and that's the Josonia paint which is our next most fluid paint it's not quite fluid enough for this purpose so it won't do that very dribbly thing but uh, the free flow paint which is a little bit looser than the Josonia paint can be packaged into this tube with an ordinary cap and you don't have any um, deliberations to go through about how you want to maintain a usable paint package. As I said, uh, my, my solution to this is to have a matchstick and I don't know, we were going to rush out and buy these little pointy caps because I thought they were going to be the answer, but it might not be quite as simple as I thought it was. So I'd very much like to hear the audience opinion about this, whether you would agree with me that a, a tube of free flow might be easier to use than a little bottle with a, a sprocket on the top. I keep forgetting things. Before we leave this subject of packaging, um, 
If you do come to a workshop, please bring your favourite liquid fluid or whatever the paint is to the workshop to help each other compare them because one of the things that you can do as a group is decide which kind of paint you like to use. Now obviously I hope you're going to think that free flow is the be all and end all of everything but you might really end up liking these very liquid paints but the, the simple way to find out is to talk to each other and also have a look at what each other are doing in the workshop. And uh, I know you cannot do uh, imitation gouaches and watercolours with the very liquid paint because it's too acrylic-y, it dries with a shiny finish, it doesn't work the right way. Now, I think you will have to agree when I show you some of the sketches that I do in Central Australia that they do look like gouaches or watercolours and I think the thing there is that if you are more experienced as an acrylic painter but you like the look of gouache or watercolour for works on paper now everyone having an exhibition needs to have some big paintings and you need to have some works on paper. Now, if you are not a crash hot watercolourist or a really, really top notch gouache artist, then the fact that you know how to use acrylics and you know that each time you put a colour down it'll stay there, it'll be waterproof and you can come over the top of it and all of those things, you can use your existing knowledge to create a painting in a different mode that the audience won't be able to tell that you have uh, cheated. Is that cheating? What do people think? Um, well, that's an interesting thought because the, the Watercolour Institute now allows any kind of water-based media to be exhibited. So they're very broad-minded and then some watercolourists would really have you severely punished if you attempted to fraudulently present an acrylic gouache into a gouache exhibition and so on. So it's interesting to hear what people think about that. And, and you don't have to be an audience, you can talk back again and anyone that says anything interesting, it will get posted on this website. So let's hear from you.